the question I most often ask is, how did you think this up? <laughs> this technique that you use, and it was a very long process. If I just thought it up, it would have been much easier. It took about 45 years. <laughs> um, here I am laying out a piece. I have like all these bundles of threads at my disposal on my work table. And I'm not laying them out one by one either. They're, you know, bunches by bunches. It does take a while, and there are many, many layers of um, many different colors to make a transformation that I'm looking for. Then the whole piece, this is why I need assistance, um, is loaded into a kiln, and I had to design these kilns so they open top and bottom because I'm actually going in and out of these kilns, um, working on them as the piece, when the piece is hot of course, with a fire suit and special gloves. So here the piece is loading in. You'll see that the first form that it's going to get transferred into is sitting there, the big bowl form underneath of it. So we're loading in the... The, the shaping starts to be predetermined at the very beginning. During the fusing process, those what we refer to as pillows are inserted once the piece is fused and softened so I can insert them without cracking the piece. You, see, you can see here the different layers and crossings of thread that keeps the threads from separating when they're stretching. The fact that they're going in different directions. Because although glass is an amorphic structure, these, because of the fusion of these threads, what happens is that very fine lines of air are trapped in, which in a funny way, it gives the glass a structure that affects how it moves and it affects how I can shape it. So there you see the gloves, and I'm pretty suited up. I'm transferring, I've transferred the piece back into the mold from being flat. You can't quite see it, that's the same piece. It actually is a bright red piece, but when it's heated up, it looks almost black. You can see how hot the elements in the kiln are, those glowing orange lines around the perimeter of the um, kiln. It's being transformed. You can see that I've um, started to, you know, curl in the edges even more than they were. Those, those pillows that we put in that make soft folds give me the possibility to very quickly exaggerate those folds um, without having to be inside the kiln for too long. Then the piece comes out of the kiln at this point. It cools down. It takes about two to three days to cool down. This is a wonderful assistant, Emily, who came from France um, to work with us for one semester, to intern with me for one semester of part of her course studies. She's just cleaning the edges of the piece. I'm about to put it back in the kiln. You can see how large it is. The volume of the piece is Pretty big. And you can see the color again now that it's cooled down. Now it goes upside down over a cone. You can see the folds th that are there. Predetermine what happens as it's the heat and the gravity and the weight of the piece starts stretching it down. Again, it looks black, but it's that red piece. And then by many different methods, I finish the shaping of the piece, sometimes by pressing it with preheated boards, um, sometimes by just squeezing it with my hands, sometimes by inserting other um, jigs or pillows that um, the piece is, is slowly dropping down over and then it pushes it back up and forms different, different curls and undulations and that's what happens, that's the resulting piece.